This entire chapter, chapter 5, is about dividing decimals. We're at 5.1, Division Patterns with Decimals. Patterns can help us place the decimal point in a quotient. We can use a pattern of powers of 10. The decimal point moves one place to the left each time the divisor increases by a power of 10. We learned about powers of 10 back in video 1.4, which is linked in the description. The exponent tells us how many times to use the base as a factor. If we have 10 to the 0 power, we're going to use 10 as a factor 0 times. It's just equal to a 1. If we have 10 to the first power, it's equal to 10. We're just using 10 as a factor one time. It's just a 10. 10 to the second power, or we could read this as the second power of 10, means 10 times 10. It's equal to 100. 10 to the third power means we have three factors of 10. That's 1,000. And 10 to the fourth power means we have four factors of 10. That's equal to 10,000. And when the base number is 10, the exponent tells us how many zeros to write after the 1. We have a zero exponent, we have zero zeros. We have one exponent, we have one zero. We have a two for an exponent, we have two zeros. Three for an exponent, three zeros. Four for an exponent, four zeros. And see how they're written after the number one? Dividing by a power of 10 is the same as multiplying by one-tenth, one-hundredth, or one-thousandth. We have 123 divided by 10 to the zero power, that means we have 123 divided by 1. It keeps its identity. It's 123. When we have 123 divided by 10 to the first power, that means we have 123 divided by 10. Our decimal point is going to move one hop to the left. 123 divided by 10 to the second power is equal to 123 divided by 100. See? 10 times 10. That's equal to 1 and 23 hundredths. The decimal point is going to move two hops to the left. Each quotient is one-tenth of the previous quotient. For each additional power, the decimal moves left. Here we have 270 divided by 1,000. And there's a pattern in these products and quotients. So if we look at 270 times 1, it keeps its identity, it's 270. When we do 270 divided by 1, it's equal to 270. 270 times 1 tenth is equal to 27 and 0 tenths. And 270 divided by 10 is equal to 27 and 0 tenths. 270 times 1 hundredth is equal to 2 and 70 hundredths. 270 divided by 100 is equal to 2 and 70 hundredths. 270 times 1 thousandth is equal to 270 thousandths. And 270 divided by 1,000 is equal to 270 thousandths. Dividing by a power of 10 is the same as multiplying by 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, or 1 thousandth. We're getting the same answer whether we're dividing by a power of 10 or multiplying by 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, or 1 thousandth. Dividing by 10 is the same as multiplying by 1 tenth, or finding 1 tenth of a number. 2 and 3 tenths divided by 10 is equal to 2 and 3 tenths times 1 tenth. Dividing by 10 moves the decimal point left one place. So we have 23 hundredths, and multiplying by 1 tenth moves the decimal point one left. It's 23 hundredths. Dividing by 100 is the same as multiplying by 1 hundredth, or finding 1 hundredth of a number. We have 24 and 5 tenths divided by 100. Dividing by 100 moves the decimal point left two places, 1, 2. It's equal to 24 and 5 tenths times 1 hundredth. Multiplying by 1 hundredth moves the decimal left two places. They're both equal to 245 thousandths. 
but make sure our decimal point is moving left. So this is what happens when we use exponents to find a quotient. We have 270 divided by 10 to the third power. That's the same thing as 270 divided by 1,000. And there's a pattern that each divisor or power of 10 is 10 times the divisor before it. Each quotient is one-tenth the quotient before it. 270 divided by 10 to the zero power, well, that's just a 1. That's equal to 270. And 270 divided by 10 to the first power means 270 divided by 10. It's equal to 27 and zero-tenths. 270 divided by 10 to the second power, that means 10 times 10, doesn't it? That means it's going to be divided by 100. That's 2 and 70 hundredths. And 270 divided by 10 to the third power, that's three factors of 10. That's 1,000. It's equal to 270 thousandths. And do you notice that whatever the exponent is, that's how many times we're moving the decimal point left? Here we move it left zero times. It stays at 270. Here, we move it left one time. We have one for an exponent. Now, we're going to move it two times because we have two for an exponent. Now, it's going to hop three times because we have three for an exponent. And remember, the exponent tells us how many times to use 10 as a factor. And when the base number is 10, the exponent tells us how many decimal place value hops to move left. Here we need to find the quotient using a pattern of powers of 10. So remember, when the base number is 10, the exponent tells us how many decimal place value hops we move to the left. And this has got a 2. That means this decimal point is going to move 2 hops to the left. It's going to move to the left side of the 5. 56 and 1 tenth divided by 10 to the second power is equal to 561 thousandths. Here we have 26 and 3 tenths divided by 10 to the first power. So remember, the exponent is telling us how many decimal place value hops to move left. That means we're going to hop it 1 to the left. We have 1 as our exponent. We're going to move it 1 hop to the left. It's equal to 2 and 63 hundredths. Here we have 178 divided by 10 to the third power. Our exponent is 3. That's telling us to move our decimal point 3 hops to the left. And it's a whole number. That means the decimal point is right here. If we move it 3 hops to the left, it's going to be on the left side of the 1. 178 divided by 10 to the third power is equal to 178 thousandths. Here we have 45. That's a whole number divided by 10 to the third power. We know if it's a whole number, the decimal point should be right here. And we have an exponent 3, so we need to move our decimal point 3 hops to the left. If we do that, we're not going to have enough digits. But we know we can put a 0 there as a placeholder between the decimal point and the 4. 45 divided by 10 to the third power is equal to 45 thousandths. Now let's try some higher order thinking skills. Remember a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. We need to solve for n. That means we need to find out what n is equal to. So we think, how did the decimal point move? It says 177 divided by n is equal to 1 and 77 hundredths. This is a whole number. That means the decimal was here. And it moved 1, 2 hops. n is a power of 10. What exponent do you think would go there? If it moved 2 hops to the left, what number should we put for our exponent? If you said 2, you're right. It moved two hops to the left. It must be 10 to the second power. Here we have n divided by 10 to the third power is equal to 497 thousandths. We need to find the value of n, and we think, if this 3 exponent is here, 
That means this decimal point was moved three places left. So it must have been originally three places to the right. One, two, three. That means it was over here on the right side of the seven. That means n is equal to 497. The decimal point was over here. We divided it by 10 to the third power, so it went one, two, three hops to the left. That made 497 thousandths. A basketball team needs to raise $3,000 to buy new equipment. In the first week, the players raised one-tenth of the amount needed, and the coach raised one-hundredth of the amount needed. How much money did the players and coach raise? So we think both amounts are being compared to the $3,000, the amount needed. We can use patterns of powers of 10 to find one-tenth and one-hundredth of $3,000. $3,000 times one-tenth, we're going to move the decimal point from back here, one hop left. That's the same thing as $3,000 divided by 10. It's equal to $300. That's the amount the students raised. The amount the coach raised was one-hundredth. We're multiplying it by one-hundredth, so the decimal right here is going to move two hops to the left, one, two. It's the same thing as 3,000 divided by 100. The coach raised $30. And how much money did the players and coach raise? They raised $330. Mrs. Kim uses 12 and 5 tenths kilograms of flour to bake 1,000 cookies. How many kilograms of flour will she use to bake 100 cookies? We think 100 is 10 times less than 1,000. She'll use 10 times less flour. We can multiply 12 and 5 tenths times 1 tenth. Or we could divide 12 and 5 tenths by 10. 12 and 5 tenths times 1 tenth, we're going to move the decimal point one hop to the left. It'll equal 1 and 25 hundredths kilograms. Or we could do 12 and 5 tenths divided by 10. That'll move the decimal point one hop left. That is also equal to 1 and 25 hundredths kilograms. And remember to label the answer as kilograms. We need to label our answers for word problems. Make sure your decimal point is moving left. You want to make sure it's going in the correct direction. It's got to go left. Our next lesson, 5.2, we're going to divide decimals by whole numbers using a model such as base 10 blocks. I hope I'll see you there. Have a wonderful day. Bye.